And now, on with the show. 23 years ago, I met a little boy who profoundly affected my life. I still remember now how deeply moved I was. When little Sultan, born two and a half months early, stopped me from what I was doing, reached out with his little hand to touch my finger. Abandoned by his parents at birth, <coughs> I realized that the only way he received touch was through the medical procedures we performed on him in order to keep him alive. When I realized that being touched that way was very unpleasant, I tried to spend the time in between moments of doing painful procedures to him to make sure to stroke his little, tiny, hairy arms and back. What I started realizing during those moments was that when little Sultan <coughs> should have been in his mother's womb for another two months, but he was this conscious and aware, then could babies in the womb be just as aware about what happens around them? Uh, this moment really defined my career and also inspired me to help birth a new humanity. Around the world, approximately 135 million women give birth each year. Five to six babies will be born every second of every day. In Uganda, by 2050, the population will have tripled in size from 34 million to 100 million people. Birth is the most universal thing on earth. It is one thing we have all in common. We have all been born, delivered our own babies, or know someone who is about to give birth. Where we come into the world has nothing to do with race, religion, or tribe, but with longitude and latitude, because where we are born also determines how. And regardless if our birth took place under a thatched grass roof or in a high-tech delivery room, our parents prayed for us to be healthy, and their loved ones prayed for the birth to go well. In the United States, we like to say after a birth, a healthy mom, healthy baby. Tragically, in many other areas of the world, it is a live mom, a live baby. Based on the Ugandan proverb, the laughter of a child is the light of a house, I can only imagine how dark it must become when a child does not survive. What is also being said is that when a mother bleeds to death, a nation bleeds with her. In preparation, for my first time visit to this continent, I learned that proverbs are a very integral part of African culture. One proverb that really intrigued me was when the hyena is the judge, the goat has no rights. Could this imply that when a government, until a government decides that their budget should go towards health care versus corruption and wasteful spending, the people continue to suffer. If only those in charge understood that peace begins in the womb and not by buying more military hardware. A proverb from Ghana is as follows. A child in the mother's womb unmistakably takes some qualities from her. More than three decades of research in the field of antenatal and birth psychology and health has shown that that is profoundly true. It is not just what a mother eats and drinks, but everything she feels and experiences in her environment that has an impact on her baby's future health, intelligence, and well-being. The latest research in epigenetics shows that the most critical formative period goes back even earlier than birth. The findings point to the time shortly before conception to after birth as the most critical in establishing patterns in all areas of our life physical, mental, emotional, and relation. Researchers studying this relatively new science called epigenetics have discovered that genes is not a fixed predetermined program which is passed from one generation to the next, but that genes can be affected and either turned on or off based on environment and experiences. It is not just what we eat and drink, but everything we feel and experience that leaves an imprint on our babies. They also discovered that an epigenetic legacy is not just given to our children, but to our grandchildren as well. 
I wish that we had some kind of universal menu called Birthing a New Humanity that would teach us that if we truly want to give a child the optimum start in life, parenting should really begin before conception. A study of first-time fathers in London showed that men who reflect on the way they were parented and how that helped them become the person they are today would produce happier and better emotionally adjusted children. Men who accompany their wives to antenatal visits and are present and can bond with their babies at birth are far less likely to abuse their children later in life. What I found a rather amusing African proverb is it is not by watching the newlywed wife that she is going to be pregnant. <laughs> According to Uganda statistics, four out of ten babies were unplanned. 600 women are defiled every month, and one out of five girls already a mother or pregnant before becoming 18. Imagine for a moment what it must feel like to be conceived during an act of violence and spent nine months in the womb of a mother who hated or feared the man who raped her. Luckily, the vast majority of us were not conceived this way, but even if our conception was welcome, all of us were marinated inside amniotic fluid filled with the flavors of our mother's emotional life and state of mind. So what were the flavors like in the womb you spent time in? Was it filled with happiness, joy, anxiety, depression? Did your mother lose, the, lose a loved one? Was she mourning, perhaps? Did the umbilical cord not only feed you nutrients, but also genetically modified foods, nicotine, alcohol, or drugs? Maybe you already got a taste of the horrors of war or domestic abuse before taking your very first breath. Whatever those flavors were like in the womb becomes the blueprint of our life. And just like our, blue, our shadow, this blueprint will follow us where. Because how our mother experienced her life and how she was treated with abuse or neglect or love and respect profoundly affects the way we treat ourselves, everyone else, and everything we encounter. A woman is a flower in a garden, and the men's the man the fence around it, the husband, sorry, the fence around it. What a beautiful way of explaining the role of a husband, particularly when his wife is with child. If men only understood that their support <coughs> is so tremendously important because what happens in the room will last a lifetime and will forever affect his child. I believe that when men come to realize this, they will start treating women with more respect. <coughs> because after all, Mother Nature has chosen their wives and daughters to not only birth their babies, but also shape the future of humanity. From child abuse to corruption <coughs> and from animal abuse and trashing our planet. We have an impaired capacity to love ourselves and to love others, which needs to change. According to birth psychologists and therapists, babies are very conscious and very aware when they're born. Clinical findings show that babies remember everything that happened at birth. They will remember it particularly when it was very traumatic. The fact that these findings are all fairly recent explains that they have not been added to most medical and nursing textbooks yet, which also explains that the person who's going to take care of you and neighbor and deliver your baby might not know about this either. This really needs to change because like they say in South Africa, it is not difficult to hurt, but it is difficult to repair. In many areas of the world, Pregnant women and babies are already facing so many challenges that they should not be met with obstetrical violence in the delivery room. Regardless whether the hands that catch a baby belong to a trained obstetrician, a very skilled midwife, or a well-seasoned traditional birth attendant, they should all bear in mind 
that the X forgets, but the tree remembers. How babies are welcomed creates the foundation for their sense of safety, self-worth, and belonging, and their capacity to have healthy relationships that are based on love, empathy, and trust. <clears throat> One of the most incredible proverbs that we borrow a lot in the West where I live is it takes a village to raise a child. We have a lot to learn from you about that, about creating community. Um, we use it to explain to prospective parents how important it is to have the support of their communities. When communities understand that parents are the key to birthing a new humanity, they should actually leave no stone unturned to provide that support. If we want to create a world that becomes a better place for our children, it is not just the birth professionals, the politicians, the parents, but all of us who really need to pitch in and do what we can to create that world that we can dream of for our children. Thank you.